So I've been sticking this computer chip into my arm for over a year now. Oh my God, it's actually in there. And this is how it's changed my diet, my productivity, and my life. Ow, oh, oh, it just came out, look at that. That little filament was inside of my body. Is it a little bloody? That's not good. Now, what is a continuous glucose monitor? It's essentially a little chip. This is for diabetics, but I'm a non-diabetic. And I install this on my body to be able to understand my interstitial glucose levels throughout the day. I can understand how my diet, my sleep, my stress, and everything in my life impacts my glucose levels. And why is that important? I wanna understand if I have a high spike in glucose, is that gonna cause me to peak in energy and then all of a sudden crash later on? And then can that help me understand what foods should I eat? How should I eat those foods? So that's why I decided to buy one of these devices. And that's pretty much it that you get in this box. This is the installation device. So we'll just open it up, take the bottom, and we'll do this on the table. Put it in, that denotes that it's all the way in. And now you can see the needle. Look at that needle right there. Oh yeah, so I'm gonna stick that needle into my body. Typically when I do this, I try to find the jiggliest part, which is probably right here. This is the magical sticker that goes on top of it. It pretty much makes a statement that I am cool and I'm tracking my diet. Yeah. Let's put it on. The hard part is actually making sure that the logo is facing up. Because if I go like this, and I put it this way, and then my arm goes down, it is not facing up, so this is an extreme challenge. If you have someone else who can do it, hopefully please ask them, it'll make it that much easier. All right, so why get a continuous glucose monitor? Honestly, for me, it was understanding how my diet impacts my energy levels throughout the day, and there's no real way to measure that other than using a CGM. I wanted to leverage a CGM to get real-time insights and tighten the feedback loop on the foods that I eat. So if something's not good for me, I want an app to like yell at me, so that way, over time, if it yells at me enough, Maybe I'll change my behavior. So how does a level CGM work? Essentially what you need to do is you sign up, you'll go through like a medical waiver and they will have like a teledoc prescribe you the CGM because in the United States you actually need a prescription. I think in Canada and other countries you can actually just buy it at the store. They'll ship you two CGMs each lasting about 14 days. They provide an option of either a Freestyle Libre or a Dexcom which lasts 10 days. And then once you get it, you'll install it onto your arm and then you'll connect it to the app and you'll scan it at least every eight hours to get as much of your glucose data as you can. You'll input the foods that you eat. You'll either input or automatically enter your fitness workouts and your sleep, and then the app will give you a feedback. So around two to three hours after you input the meal and you scan the NFC chip on your arm, it'll give you like a rating of like one out of 10 in terms of how good or bad that food is for you, depending on like their algorithm. And it's all based on how much did the food spike your glucose after you ate it. And then after about 10 to 14 days, you'll remove that device and you'll replace it with a different one. Typically, I'll switch arms each sensor that I'm using. And for me, I've been able to understand, okay, if I exercise in the morning and if I eat a lot of fiber, I'm gonna minimize my glucose spikes no matter what I eat. So that way, I know that if I do certain behaviors, I can kind of cheat a little bit and have more of the not so good stuff. So how does it work? So this is actually what the device looks like. It's a CGM on this side, it's super sticky. It sticks to your skin and this filament goes inside of your body, um, but it's not a needle, it's a filament. And then this is kind of their active patch that you can put on so that way it doesn't fall off as quickly. And this has an NFC chip inside and the filament will read your interstitial glucose. And then you'll use the app to actually scan the NFC on this. So you tap the top of your iPhone and it scans and it inputs the data. And what's interesting about Levels is you actually need two apps right now. I think they're working on updating it, but the first one is Abbott Labs Freestyle Libre Link, and this, you just tap scan new sensor. It pulls up the NFC. I can go ahead and scan. It says scan complete. I do need to replace the sensor like that's old, but that's kind of how the process works. You want to make sure you do that at least every eight hours. It'll pull the data into here, and you can kind of see the data over time, and then inside of that, there's a connected apps. So this data is actually getting pushed into the Levels app. So once I've synced it in the Levels app, I want to come here. You can tap sync now, and now it's gonna download the data from the Freestyle Libre servers, and it's gonna show that data right here. So as you can see, there's two spikes, two spikes. And once I input my food, so I'll hit the plus sign, I hit my meal, I can add a photo, uh, whether it was in the past or current. What's really nice is if I add a past photo, it actually updates the time. So this was 11.43 a.m. So if you take a photo of your food when you're eating it, you can add it later on, and it automatically updates the date and time. If there's any past foods that you've eaten, you can go ahead and tap it here and automatically it adds that food. If you don't have a smart device that inputs your exercise workouts into Apple Health, you can manually go ahead and add that exercise. And if there's any other notes, they give you that feature as well. It'll give me my stable hours throughout the day. As you can see, there's like two little red dots. Those are the points where I wasn't stable and I had those two spikes. 
Uh, and then it'll give me a rating for the food that I eat. So I had two bananas this morning and I had a moderate spike from that food. If we go to other days, so I can go ahead, let's go to a day where I had a lot of spikes. So this day I had a lot of spikes. You can see that I had ice cream, salmon, and veggies. So I got a gentle rise, a six for that meal. Um, the Chipotle bowl is actually really bad. So one big thing I've learned is like eating out is actually extremely unhealthy. So even just eating at Chipotle versus like making the same exact thing at home, it can be much better for you to make that stuff at home because there's a lot of things in Chipotle that you don't know about. So it says moderate spike, right? It's a four out of 10. So this is probably something I wouldn't want to consistently eat. They also have a feature where I can connect with a nutritionist and one of these folks will help me out in terms of understanding my data better. I think that's really neat. I haven't used that feature yet. If you wanna see that video, let me know. Not only does Levels offer the connect with a nutritionist option, but they also do offer another upsell, which is their metabolic health panel. I do actually love this metabolic health panel, um, but mine has been buggy. I have like 18 on one and 11 on another. If we can get that fixed levels, let me know. But yeah, so they do it through bioreference laboratories. That's what they did. This lady came to my house. She drew my blood, got a couple of vials, and then they test it. What's really neat is in this one, I get fasting insulin. So I haven't gotten this in any other blood test like I do on Inside Tracker, but I love that I can come here and see that my fasting insulin had changed over a five day period because I did a sugar binge, if you ever watch my I Quit Sugar video. But I really do love that I can come in here and see this information. I do wanna see trends over time, as well as correlating this data to my continuous glucose monitor data. So I'm hoping that they can expand this feature set. But just being able to see where I'm trending over time is extremely valuable, especially with the super accurate blood work. Because a phlebotomist comes to your house, they draw blood and they test at a lab. Whereas a continuous glucose monitor can have a margin of error when you have installed it on your arm. Um, and then there's also content and blogs that you can read about. And it automatically pulls in my sleep data from my Aura Ring and Whoop Strap. Um, and I can kind of see my trends over time, right? This is my average glucose. One goal I have for the next 100 days is to get my average glucose in the 89 range. So I'm really trying to understand what foods spike my glucose and how can I change my diet and lifestyle behavior so I can get that average glucose to under 90. And there you can see kind of how it all changes. So there's all the data and information. See my days, the, the spike time that I've had, how many spikes I had on that day, and I can click into it and see why did I have those spikes. Um, and if you do exercise, it actually just says, hey, you had strenuous exercise, so we are going not going to take that spike into account because you can also spike from exercising. And one thing to note is I will do this on and off. So I've done this for like about two years and I'll do it for a couple months and then I'll take a break and then repeat, you know, because it is rather expensive. So it does add up over time. Now, what are the five things that I've learned while using the CGM for the past year? Number one, bad sleep. The most important thing is food is not the biggest driver of glucose spikes. It can actually be your lifestyle behaviors. So bad sleep, number one. If I get bad sleep during the night, I'm gonna have higher glucose spikes. So when I do have bad sleep, I really make sure not to eat the foods that are gonna spike my glucose. I avoid the sugary foods. I avoid processed foods on any days where I have bad sleep. Number two, stress. So stress can actually just spike my glucose even if I don't eat anything. So something I've been trying to do a lot more of is NSDR, Yoga Nidra that Huberman talks about. Uh, doing any kind of meditation or breath work to kind of keep my nerves down throughout the day, reduce my anxiety. I think you, you have to figure out what works for you. I've realized if I don't drink too much caffeine, keep my caffeine milligram intake low and doing some NSDR and just really making sure that I have my day planned out helps with keeping my stress levels low. Number three, the order of which I eat my food. So now when I go to a restaurant or eat at home, I try to eat the protein first. So whether that's the salmon, the fish or the eggs, and then I'll eat kind of the higher carby stuff after. So that, whether that's the rice or the bread that way, the protein can settle in my stomach first, and what I've learned from experience is if I change the order of how I eat that meal, it can actually minimize the glucose spike from that meal and minimize my peak of energy and then my crash of energy. So if I want to have sustained focus, I just change the order of what I eat. Third is meal composition. So if I have a choice for desserts between an ice cream or a brownie, I've noticed that a brownie spikes my glucose a lot more than ice cream because ice cream has some fats in it and the fat helps kind of mitigate that glucose spike. I love ice cream, so I'm just gonna keep eating more ice cream. Five, walking after eating. So even just a 10 minute, 20 minute walk, just a small little bit of movement, right? You don't need to go do high intensity exercise, but just doing a little bit of movement right after you eat can be really beneficial in minimizing glucose spikes. So now if I grab lunch with a friend or if I'm eating with someone, you know, if we just go for a walk, get a little bit of blood flow in, it actually can be very helpful in terms of minimizing the glucose spike and keeping me focused throughout the day. And then six, time of day. 
So one of the biggest things is when you eat something in the morning, it's gonna have less of a glucose spike versus at night. And that's all due to like melatonin and how that whole system works. I'm not a doctor, I'm just a YouTuber. Don't listen to me, please. But what I learned is that I should eat ice cream for breakfast rather than for dinner. So this is why Americans eat dessert for breakfast. They had already figured this out and they said, we need to have dessert in the morning. But in actuality, what I try to do now is if I'm gonna have desserts, I try to have it like around lunchtime rather than during dinner. I don't wanna eat desserts right before bed because I've also noticed that it impacts my sleep as well as my skin temperature when I am sleeping throughout the night. So just shift desserts to like midday. And just note these CGMs are built for diabetics. It's built for massive glucose swings and not for such intricate things. So just keep that in mind. Um, I do wear mine in the sauna. I work out with it, I sweat, I swim with it. And there are some issues where I have noticed where if I rub up against the wall, it could fall off. That's happened to me a couple times and they've been super nice about replacing it. Um, there was one time where I was swimming every single day and I just went really fast up off the wall and the CGM fell off. So maybe I'm just really fast or it's just not secure. I'm actually kind of fast swimmer. Uh, <laughs> but these are just things to keep in mind. I have noticed that even if you do get one, if you miss the eight hour period, you might miss some data, totally appropriate. It might fall off, some things might happen, you might in install it incorrectly, like that's just part of the experience. Be very open-minded when you try a CGM. This is not as easy as any other fitness tracker. There are gonna be issues, challenges. Be very patient and be very open-minded when you dive into this experience. Yeah, and the biggest thing I've learned is that like using it for a year, like my diet changes every couple months, so I make sure to do it every two to three months, I try to wear this again. And I love that I can really understand how have my lifestyle and behavior habits changed and how can I keep myself in check by using this data to make sure that I'm on track, staying healthy, and I can live for a long period of time. Go make sure to watch my video on where I bought every single CGM brand linked right here. I tested them all just for you. Peace.